Hi, welcome to the 14 day weather forecast. Things have been mixed recently with a lot of regional variability across the UK. Nonetheless, it hasn't been all bad, not by any means, as you can see from this photograph that I took in Carbis Bay, Cornwall. So what about the next couple of weeks? I'll start by taking a look at the view across Europe and the North Atlantic. This sequence runs from 12 GMT on Tuesday the 22nd. It's using data from the Canadian Global Model. At the outset, outbreaks of rain are clearing from the far south, and the next wet, uh, area of wet weather is beginning to encroach into the northwest. That pushes southeastwards across all parts of the country during the next few days. But it's as we head into the weekend that things begin to become uncertain. On this particular animation, it's looking mostly dry away from the far south. That continues into the early part of next week, that general pattern. But if I now show you the uh, animation using data from the UK Met Office global model, this is stepped at 12 hour intervals, what we can see is not a great deal of difference in the next couple of days, but through the weekend, it's generally a wetter picture. In fact, on Sunday, you can see here, there's a band of heavy outbreaks of rain affecting Wales and central parts of England. I, at this range, don't focus on the details. I'm just showing this to highlight the differences between the models. I'll also show the charts from the GFS. This is for 15 GMT on Saturday the 26th. Very wet in parts of the country, if it's correct. You can see the yellow shading there over Wales and parts of eastern England, indicating heavy bursts of rain. Move forwards 24 hours, and it's still not looking at all good in much of the country. We've got heavy rain there affecting Northern Ireland, northwestern England, southern Scotland, maybe eastern parts of England, the far southeast as well. Potentially a very wet weekend if the GFS is correct. So we've gone from the Canadian model, which was dry really, apart from in the far south, to the UK Met Office, which was going for a wetter scenario, to the GFS, which is really going for the potential for heavy downpours in places. Now, temperatures will be really dependent upon cloud cover and sunshine levels rather than the air mass above our heads. Here's the uh, here are the forecast maximums across Europe at 15 GMT on Sunday the 27th. What we see is it's very warm across Germany, the Low Countries, down across France. By the time we're, we hit Spain and Portugal, it's hot. Maximum temperatures shown on this around 38 Celsius in southern Spain. GFS, you can often add a couple of degrees on because it has a tendency to under forecast. So we could be looking at a scorching 40 Celsius in southern Spain, if it's correct. Just zooming into the UK at the same time. Here we can see the highest values are in the London area, 22 Celsius being shown. So again, adding a couple on to those values, we're up to 24. But to reach 24 Celsius, it's going to be very dependent upon that rain pushing northwards, as, as was shown on GFS charts with uh, brighter conditions returning into southern counties. You can see here that the temperatures in the wet areas, which were northern England, northern Wales, perhaps north, northern Ireland, southern Scotland, they are significantly lower at this point. So it would really depend on where that rain is and what, how much cloud is around. It could be warm in the south if, if the GFS is correct. The details are so uncertain at this range, I wouldn't be at all surprised if it turned out significantly cooler. In terms of rainfall, as I say, the distribution is uncertain. I've got two charts here from the German icon model. The one on the left is from the 00Z update, and one on the right is from the 06Z update, six hours newer. They are both forecasting out to 96 hours ahead, and they're showing the accumulated rainfall within that period can see clearly the wettest conditions are in the southern half of the UK with between 20 and maybe 70 millimetres of rain being forecast varying across these two model runs. So that's suggesting the likelihood of it being quite wet or even wet or very wet in the southern, in southern and central parts of Britain. So more in line with the Met Office and GFS model sequences than the Canadian one. 
So how do the deterministic models stack up against each other one week ahead? GFS to begin with, so we're looking at Tuesday the 29th of June. You can see high pressure of the Azores building northeastwards towards the UK. And this area of lighter yellow, orangey shading shows where an area of low pressure is expected to be. So GFS has it over the North Sea. And I think this way this low pressure moves around, where it's heading to, how long it takes to get there, is really critical to the weather we experience in the UK through the first week of the forecast period, at least through the second half of the first week. Here's the German ICON model. It has that area of low pressure dropping south of the UK towards the Bay of Biscay. I think earlier in the, in the run it has it, as I say, moving down across the UK, at least across southern and central parts, hence those relatively high rainfall totals it was showing. The Canadian model, well, here we've got it centered down further southward, so it's, oh, it is over Bay of Biscay at this point, with high pressure having more influence over the UK. So the Canadian model is really moving it away more quickly, hence the drier scenario it was going for, for through the first weekend. UK Met Office model, here you can see it's just centered probably to the southeast of, of England. Um, with, with, with high pressure there from the Azores becoming more influential again over the north and the west. Finally, the European, the ECM model, generally considered to be the most accurate of all of them, has the area of low pressure a long way south there again over Biscay probably, centred there at least, so it's actually quite consistent with the German ICON model, again potentially quite a lot of showery rain before that area of low pressure drops away southwards. So all in all, there is there's quite a lot of difference in the way the computer models, the deterministic models, are handling that area of low pressure through the second half of the first week. And that's really why there is a, a lot of uncertainty about the rainfall totals that we can expect and the distribution of the rain itself. So what about week two? Well, I'll start looking at the ensemble data now to assess the probabilities of the different scenarios. Here's the European plot showing air mass temperatures for London. I've boxed the second week with the, uh, with the red. Yeah, I think the important point to note here is that the trend is upwards. The mean of all the runs is around 10 Celsius, which would lead to the potential for it to be warm or even very warm down at the surface. But air mass temperatures at this time of the year are not enough on their own. What's equally important is the amount of cloud and precipitation. To get the, to, to get the warmth building down at the surface, we really need plenty of sunshine as well as, as, well as, 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 as high temperatures aloft. Looking at the GEFS, Top half of this chart is showing air mass temperatures, so the same as the uh, European plot, which I just brought up. You can see through the second week, they're mostly above average over London. Uh, the, 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 the thick black line shows the 30 year average. In terms of rainfall, well, I've labelled it as an ongoing risk of rain. It's not really looking particularly wet through that second week, although some of the rainfall spikes are quite large, you can see here. And what each of those spikes represents is the forecast output from one of the runs in the ensemble. So I, I, would, I would summarize that by saying relatively warm upper air, air aloft. In sunny spells, therefore, temperatures will rise nicely down at the surface, but there is that risk of showery rain at times, even through the second week of the forecast period. Jumping up to Glasgow. Here's the European uh, plot for MS temperatures. Similar to the London one, we can see it's actually quite warm up aloft through the second week. Looking at the GEFS for, uh, for, for Glasgow, well, again, mostly above average at the start of the second week, but later on towards the end of the 16 day period, there is a downwards trend there for a more cooler runs getting into the mix and that's pulling down the mean. In terms of rainfall, we labeled it as ongoing through the 16 day period. It's probably drier according to this around the 29th to 30th of June before the number of rain spikes increases once again in the early part of 
July. So the difference here really with the London chart is that later on it's somewhat wetter, but also there's more of a trend downwards in upper air temperatures. Therefore, I'll next bring up the data table showing two meter temperatures, the ones we experienced down at the surface, the maximums from all of the runs in the GEFS. This is the data table for London. What we can see is there's a good deal of this orange shading really continuing throughout the period. That's suggesting runs going for between 21 and 25 Celsius. They're in the majority for much of the time. There are some of the darker oranges or light reds, which are runs going for between 26 and 30 Celsius. Likewise, there are some cooler ones with the lighter orange and the yellows, which are between 11 Celsius, 15 Celsius, and 16 and 20 Celsius. So generally, there isn't that much variance showing here in the two meter temperatures through the period. Often, according to this, it's going to be close to or a little bit above the seasonal average. But really, as I say, the important thing to emphasize is it will be dependent upon the amount of cloud cover and rainfall that may or may not be around. Jumping up to Glasgow, it's a, it's a cooler picture as generally we would expect. You can see though there's still a lot of this yellowy orangey shading, the 16 to 20 Celsius maximum uh, uh, forecast category. There's more of the lighter yellows appearing and less of the darker orange. So again, there isn't that much of an upwards or downwards trend. I think here it's, there is something of a downwards trend appearing later on, and that ties in quite nicely with the uh, air mass profile, which was also showing a downwards trend towards the end of 16 days. Rainfall, data table for London. What we can see is each, each column summarizes the uh, one time slot in a given day. Uh, the, the light greys there are runs going for completely dry conditions in that time slot. The dark greys are showing small amounts of rain with the purples, blues, greens and yellows all going for large amounts of rain. Therefore, most of the runs are going for dry conditions or small amounts of rain, but there is an ongoing risk in each of these time windows of it being wetter. So I think I think that would suggest there's a good chance of at least one or two of those time slots bringing some somewhat wetter conditions during week two. Even though, even though most of the runs in any one given column are looking to be relatively dry, I think the probabilities would suggest that we'll probably, we'd have to be very lucky to miss the rain completely, especially at this time of year, because often the, the rain is going to be characterized by showery conditions rather than frontal systems moving in from the Atlantic, and those will, of course, be hit and miss. If we move up to Glasgow, here it's a, the profile is suggesting a wetter picture generally. Um, we can see there's an ongoing risk that the amount of greens, blues, and purples in the columns is greater than it was on the London uh, data table. And towards the end there, if anything, there's an upwards trend appearing. So once more, the wetter conditions later on are fitting quite nicely together with that suggestion of lower air mass temperatures and lower two meter temperatures. So it's, it's indicating, I think, the possibility at least of a transition back towards more unsettled conditions later on in the 16 day period in the north, northwest of the UK. I think another thing worth looking at is the uh, pressure chart. This using the mean from both the GEFS and the ECM ensembles because there is a notable difference here. This is uh, for Saturday the 3rd of July and it's aggregated using all the data from the GEFS ensemble. You can see the UK in the middle of that blue box, uh, blue circle even. High pressure there from the Azores ridging northeastwards with the 1,015 millibar line cutting through Northern Ireland and Northern England, North Southern Scotland. So that's important to note because if we look at the European ECM ensemble chart, what we can see is a 1,020 millibar lines actually cutting across Northern Ireland, Southern Scotland and down across England there. It's the, so the ECM ensemble is going for considerably higher pressure across the UK than the GEFS. I think at this range, it's, 
it's quite a significant difference actually. So it, what it really highlights is just the uncertainty through week two of how, uh, how, how likely we are to have settled or unsettled periods. ECM for European Ensemble, more positive if you're hoping for a drier and summary outlook. GEFS looking to be a bit more mixed there with lower pressure coming into the equation. So to summarize the next two weeks, week one, it's generally mixed. There is that risk of showers or longer, and spells, longer spells of rain, but uncertainty about the rainfall distribution during the second half. There is the potential for it to be wet or even very wet in the south, according to some computer model runs. I think we may again see rainfall totals varying quite a lot over relatively short distances due to the potential for heavy showers. Temperatures, well, warmer at times, but they will be largely dependent upon the amount of cloud and rain. Week two, in, in one word, I think changeable. The extent of the influence of high pressure is uncertain. There is an ongoing possibility of wetter conditions, particularly in the north, with the warmest and driest periods most likely to be in the south. So there we have it. It's a mixed picture. It's a relatively uncertain picture, possibly not the most satisfactory of forecasts because, because of that level of uncertainty. But unfortunately, when the data's like this, it's really the best I can offer you. Anyway, I hope you found this useful. If you did and you enjoyed it, then please remember to hit the like and subscribe buttons below. Thanks now. Bye.